Over the past several years, there's been plenty of bad news about honeybee health, with worries about collapsing colonies around the globe. But here in Utah, there's some good news. Beehives are becoming an increasingly popular backyard fixture. The backyard bees are vital to any kind of environment, any kind of setting, even cities, a little bit more rural, even if it's just one hive, you're going to get that environment that you want for a healthy atmosphere, for a healthy living. Backyard beekeepers are vital. They act as, in some ways, mini laboratories to see what works and what doesn't work for uh, commercial beekeepers on a larger scale. But not only that, they help our uh, urban ecosystem uh, by pollinating the flowering plants. To set up a hive in your backyard, the Utah State Department of Agriculture and Food does have some guidelines for where to place your bees. They suggest that they get warm, direct sun in the morning and then a little bit of shade in the afternoon. That sun warms them up and warms the flowers up so that they can go out and forage. But not all backyards are created equal. Though bees can thrive in relatively small areas, there are certain elements necessary for a healthy hive. Bees can't survive on a monoculture. I mean, just like us, you know, they need a variety of plants. Plant now, plant a lot, plant often. We want to feed those bees. If you have a nice, beautiful golf course lawn, there's nothing for a bee to eat there. We need to get back to planting lots of flowers, lots of herbs, things like that. Go with a perennial herbs, mints, they love mints. Any old fashioned hollyhocks, bachelor buttons, those kind of old fashioned flowers are what the bees really love. Besides a wide variety of plants, bees need a good water source and you should be careful about the pesticides you're using. But with a little TLC, you can get a hive or two going. And chances are your neighbors won't even notice the new friends hanging out in your backyard. But since a typical healthy hive has 40 to 50,000 bees, it's best to inform them of your new enterprise. The first thing I started to do is just let my neighbors know that we were keeping bees and to bring them back to see the beehives, to sit on the deck and just sit and just watch them and see that the bees are just coming and going and they don't care what we're doing. I also always give the neighbors a jar of honey so that that's spreading a lot of goodwill right there to have that fresh honey. Though it's not much different than if you were going to begin caring for another animal like a cat or dog, there are several things you should consider before becoming a beekeeper. Fortunately, there are plenty of places to go for information. We have lots of great resources. We have the Wasatch Beekeepers Association. You can join that. They have monthly meetings where they're talking about beekeeping basics and really training people. You should also register your beehives with the Utah Department of Agriculture and Food. Registration allows us to uh, notify beekeepers when there's an outbreak of a particular uh, disease or pest issue. It also allows beekeepers to call us and uh, request inspections. We'll come out to the beekeeper free of charge and do a health inspection on their hive, which is kind of like a uh, vet visit for the bees. The fee to have a beekeeping license is just minimal, and the benefit is so huge because I can call them at any time I have questions. And even if you don't want to be a beekeeper, there are things you can do to help the bee population. The one thing that everybody can do is just plant those flowers. If you want to help bees and you don't necessarily want to be a beekeeper, you can plant native flowering plants or you can just plant a garden. Put out mint in your garden, lavender, just things that you probably would normally want in your garden anyway. Just plant more of it because that will absolutely help the bees. From Salt Lake City, I'm Matt George for the Utah League of Cities and Towns.